Happy to see all of you again and for our new friends Science Explorers is a hands-on science program that's all about having as much fun learning as possible now for our friends that have attended Science Explorers before they know we offer our after-school clubs and I'm here today to tell you that once again, we will be offering them this school year. So if you want to learn more about that, be sure to head to our website, which I will insert right here. Because today, we are going to be talking about force and pressure and other types of ways that things like to move. What's up kids? My name is Dr. Evan Esquire and I am here from Science Explorers and today we're talking about my moped. Woo! I bet some of you are wondering, what is a moped? It's not just something that really cool people like to ride around. A moped is a motor vehicle, two wheels, that can be powered by these little bicycle pedals right here, and an engine. Kind of like with a, uh, like a Prius or a hybrid vehicle. Uh, those have an electric engine, or they can be gas powered, but this moped is either gas powered or me powered. Ah, now that we know what a moped is, we can get into the science behind how they work. Woo! When you're pedaling it, What's happening is this gear right here, as it moves, it's tugging this chain along just like your bicycle, and it's moving a gear right back there, and that's moving the back tire and hopefully moving you. The other way that the moped likes to get going is by the gasoline-powered engine right here. That's the other way besides the pedaling, and it's much less tiring, except for the parts where you have to work on it. Now this gasoline engine is what scientists call an internal combustion engine. And the name is exactly what it sounds like. Combustion, explosions, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Now an internal combustion works by having gasoline sprayed into a cylinder and that cylinder has something called a piston in it. So as the gasoline is sparked and exploded, pushes the piston up, which is connected to a gear that spins like that which connects to this right here this is another gear and the gear as that spins it'll cause that chain to pull on that gear and cause the tire to get moving as long as i did all of my repairs correctly and i often don't so that is how an internal combustion engine works now this moped only has one cylinder uh, but, you know, there can be 
you know, a lot of cars have four cylinders, six cylinders, eight cylinders, uh, you know, they, they can go on and on. But each cylinder has a tiny little explosion that pushes it up and then turns a crank and then it comes back down and then it gets exploded again. So that's a little bit of how the engine works and how the pedals work as well. But a wise man named me once said, being able to stop can be more important than getting going. Am I right? That's right, road dogs. We're talking brakes. So, the brakes on this moped work exactly like the brakes on your bicycle. You got the levers right here, this guy is your rear brake, this is your front brake, and what they do is they have a cable inside of here. What that cable does is that cable finds a, its way all the way down to here. And I'll do a little close-up in post-production, we call that B-roll, kids. And what that does is that cable tugs on a piece of rubber which pulls against the inside of the wheel. And what that does is that causes friction between the brake pad and the wheel. Now, I know a lot of us have heard of the term friction before, but what friction is, is the resistance a moving object experiences when it has to go along something else. Friction is that heat we feel between our hands when we rub them together. It is what slows down a ball when you roll it across the yard. And uh, friction is also uh, what makes uh, Fleetwood Max record rumors so magical. All right, friends, now that we are talking about slowing down, I wanna talk about another scientific concept I love called momentum. Now, before we do that, I wanna ask you a question. Uh, do you think something is easier to slow down when it's all heavy or when it's, you know, nice and light? Answer the question out loud and maybe I'll hear you. Probably not, most likely not, but let's see. All right, well, let's do an experiment to find out. Now, here is a clip of me uh, slowing down with just the weight of me and the moped. Now, here is a clip of me slowing down with a 40 pound bag of kitty litter in the basket. Now, the reason it took longer for me to slow down when I had the kitty litter in the back of my moped and ended up my neighbor's bushes is because of something called momentum. Momentum is the strength of a moving object. Momentum is why it's so hard to slow down when you're running real fast. Uh, it's why a wiffle ball, when you throw it, it doesn't quite go as far as, you know, if you threw like a baseball, something heavier. Momentum's also why Cher has been able to give us hit after hit after hit, going back to 1965. The faster or heavier something is, the more it's gonna wanna keep moving, and that's what momentum is all about. Now, momentum also is why a two-wheeled vehicle or a bicycle is able to keep moving even though it only has two wheels, because when you're just standing still, on a bicycle, gravity might take over and put you on the ground. But when you are moving, the momentum overwhelms the gravity and you just keep going forward. Things that are going just wanna keep going until they're slowed down. So let's talk about that first word, force. Now, force is just a push or a pull. I know a lot of times in science, concepts can be a little, you know, confusing. But a lot of times when you put those concepts in your own words, you'll understand them much, much better. So we know that force is a push or a pull, and we're gonna talk more about force a little bit later. 
Now, we know that we can use, you know, I can use my hands to push something over, or I can, you know, pull this tablecloth off of there. But can you use air to push or pull something? Now, we know we can use air to, you know, push my hair back. But you can also use air to pull things along. Now, uh, you may have seen this on the side of the road when you see a bunch of leaves that are just, you know, just we're kind of getting to that time of year. It's beautiful. You can use air to pull things along. When you have a fast car and that wind from that fast car goes by, it pulls the leaves into the road. And that's because of something called the Bernoulli Principle. Now, the Bernoulli Principle is all about how fast moving air has very little pressure. Whereas slow moving air, or air is kind of still like the room uh, I'm in, uh, it, that has a lot more pressure. It's the same reason why when you're opening a trash bag, you don't <laughs> to blow it up. Instead, what you do is you open it up and then you use the air around you to fill it up because that air has more pressure to it. Another way to think about this is, you know, you have fast moving air and it can pull things along. So obviously you can use air to push a ping pong ball, but you can also, oh wow, you can also use a leaf blower to pull a ping pong ball. So let me show you this. So you have right here, my leaf blower, and I have this little piece of plumbing pipe and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this on here. Now, as the air is being blown out that way, there's low pressure right here and that high pressure is creating kind of like a gap that needs to be filled in. So the leaf blower, while it's like that, it's gonna start sucking things in through here. It's the same way that your like vacuum at home works. So when I turn it on and hold the ping pong ball right here, whoopsie daisy. When I turn this on and I'm holding the ping pong ball right here, what happens is the fast moving air creates a opening with the low pressure right here and pulls things in. When you have your hand up against this, you can feel it pulling on it while it's on. And that's what sucked up the ping pong ball. But as science explorers, the way we like to have fun, bigger, better. So instead of just getting one ping pong ball at a time and just putting it right here, I built a little contraption that loads them into the barrel, I guess you could kind of say, but you have ping pong balls that are just going to be coming down through there. So when I plug it in and remove the safety pin right here, the ping pong balls will be fed into a low pressure front where the high pressure front that the ping pong balls are coming through are gonna suck them in and I don't know, let's just, uh, let's see what happens. It works. So as you can see, the experiment was a success. We were able to use Bernoulli's principle that says that when you have fast moving air, it's gonna wanna pull in other things along with it. Now, uh, one way that you can use Bernoulli's principle at home to make something cool without having to go to the hardware store several times is all you'll need uh, to do this is a straw and a cup of water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make something called an atomizer. An atomizer is what is used in a spray bottle. There we go, okay, oh, I got the light. But you can see the way that it sprays the water in a nice fine mist. And the way it does that is by having fast air move over the top of a tube that has water in it. Now, instead of uh, you know, having that fast moving air fling ping pong balls at me, what it does is it atomizes or breaks it up into small little pieces, uh, the water. It breaks the water up into tiny little particles. All right, and I need to use that water again 
All right. Now, the way you do this is you have your straw, you cut it in half like that, and then you put the one straw in the water. Now, this might take a couple of tries. We'll see how well it shows up on camera, but let's see if it looks better over this side. I'm getting my camera all wet. But what you have happening here is when that fast moving air is moving over the straw, air is going down into the straw and kind of shaking up the water and then pulling some of that water back up through the straw and out but that is how you make an atomizer at home now atomizers are used in spray bottles they're used in carburetors um i don't think it's known what carburetors are anymore everything's fuel injected am i right now that is a fun little activity you can try at home but for this next activity uh, i mentioned earlier that force a push or a pull uh right now i want to talk a little bit more about you know how forces work and how things move. So we're gonna cut to outside for this scene because it was a beautiful day. Hello friends, my name is Dr. Evan Esquire and as always, I'm here from Science Explorers. Give me a second with this guy. The wind wants it to blow down. There you go, that's how this guy works. It's like a wind sail. But today I have something very important to tell you. I need to tell you about the three states of matter. Yay! Woo! I mean the three laws of motion. Now the three laws of motion, they were, uh, that was uh, Sir Isaac Newton's baby. Now he wasn't just some old guy a long time ago. He was the most famous scientist of all time. And oh, he was having a wild one constantly. He was discovering things left and right. And what he loved the most was motion three laws of motion he was very proud of them and they kind of relate to everything around us when i say kind of i mean it literally does apply to everything around us but how things move and the motion of them ah there you go you know the way things move the way things interact with each other and the way that the world works so there's three laws of motion, and the definitions are the first law of motion is an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. And a object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. So you got your second law of motion now, and that's force equals mass times acceleration. And what that means, We'll get to it. And you have our third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Woo! So definitions in science and a lot of other studies can be intimidating sometimes. You know, it's they can be uh, long and confusing. Uh, but what I like to do is put them into my own words and kind of apply them with what I have in front of me to help me get a better understanding of how it works. So let me see what I got in front of me. Uh, All right, now that I got my favorite beach ball, we're gonna talk with three laws of motion, but we're gonna be using terms that we understand. So the first law of motion, let's go over that. An 
object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. So all that means is things will keep going until they're stopped. And things will say stop until they get going. All right. The second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. Now mass is how big and strong something is, and acceleration is how much something's speeding up, and force is about how powerful, how overall powerful something is. So to measure my force without any acceleration, I'm just gonna use how big and strong I am, and push, and that's a good measure of how powerful I am without acceleration. When I add acceleration to my force, that means I have to get a running start to push this guy, all right? Hey, how you doing? And you can see it goes much further. Now that brings us to our third and my favorite law of motion for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction. So when you throw something up, it comes down. So when I grab the meatball, and I... It comes back down. So that's the third law of motion, her reaction, there's an opposite and equal reaction. I broke my sunglasses. Woo! And then I said, oh, hello, uh, you're back, wonderful. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that segment on the three laws of motion. Now, what's really important in these lessons is that even though a scientific concept may sound, you know, kind of complicated or hard to uh, wrap your head around, uh, you can always understand science when you put it in your own terms. So we know how things move. We understand the motion. We also understand how the Bernoulli principle can have fast moving air pull things back in. So a really fun way to think about that is with something like uh, maybe an air cannon. Now, this right here is what we call an air cannon. An air cannon is one of these little toys. Some of you may have something like it at home. It has a little bungee cord inside here. So when you pull back on this, it gets pulled back in and then forces the air through. This is kind of like a big bucket, but it pushes the air through this opening right here. As you can see, there's some air pressure behind that. Now, what's even cooler is you can't see what the air looks like while it's moving because it's like air. But you can use something to make the air uh, easier to see. Now, the best way, in my opinion, to visualize how air is moving is with fog. Now, fog is a fluid. It moves wherever it's told to move, really. And what we can do is fill up our air cannon with some of the fog so you can see how it moves uh, as it's being fired out of it. All right, let me fill this up. Looks nice and full. And you can see as this settles that it makes cool little smoke rings. It makes, they're like donut shaped. And I need to clear this out because I can't see anything here. You get fog donuts. Now, as this fog clears out and potentially sets off the smoke detector, the shape, our fog donut, that shape is called a torus. Not a Ford torus, that's a car. Torus is the name of a donut shape. And as the air is moving, the air that's in the middle is the fastest. 
the air in the middle that's moving the fastest is pushing forward and then kind of pushing things out of the way. But much like our ping pong balls, when they're off to the side, they get sucked back in. Here's something I built to kind of uh, visualize what I'm talking about. You have our little donut shape. Oop, a little more fog. And this is a torus. This is our torus shape. And the air that's right here in the middle, as that moves forward, that moves back and that's our fog. So pretend this silver stuff is our fog. As fast air is moving through the center, the fog is getting pushed out of the way, but then coming back around and going through the center again. And that's how you get that torus shape, that fog donut moving forward. So you have that fast moving air in the middle and then it keeps on getting the fog trapped inside of uh, you know, the Bernoulli's principle, kind of pushing it up and then sucking it back in. Now, I want to show you how you can make your own air cannon at home. And all you'll need is a balloon and a plastic bottle. So you see your balloon and your plastic bottle and an adult to cut the bottom off of your bottle. And what that's going to do is you will then have your bottle like this and then you just need to take your balloon like that and you can also use a funnel instead of a bottle but I like the bottle more but what you're gonna do is you see how I have the balloon folded like that fold it up like that and then just cut the top off of it there we go you still want the widest part of the balloon to be below your cut because then you're going to take this and be patient with yourself with this. It's a little tricky, but you're gonna wanna stretch the balloon over, let's get this like that, over the bottom of this. And it might be nice to have someone hold this while you're doing it. Might make it work a little bit easier. Just like that. So you're gonna get it onto your bottle like this. You can also use some tape to secure the balloon onto your bottle. And that'll help it, you know, not come off. Cause I know it can be a little tricky. I had a hard time with it. All right. Yep, just using this tape to secure your balloon to the bottle. And then also you can use tape. You don't even need to tie the end of the balloon, but you need to seal it up. And I'll just use tape for this as well. So you just take that and just fold it over like that. That'll make a nice seal. There you go. Not like the artist seal, but this right here is your air cannon. And let's see if I can fill this up with some of the fog. There we go. You can see the way that it moves and ooh. Gentler seems to work better for the... There you go. You can actually really see that. Let me get some more fog in there. There we go. You can see the way that the air cannon creates these lovely little fog donuts, or as we know, uh, as they're called, Taurus. Now, the way we like to have fun as science explorers is, you know, uh, go big or go home. So you can make a one like this. Uh, I have my normal one that ordered online, but today I wanted to make a super big one. So I got this right here. And as you can see, it's the same thing as my yellow one the one i bought from the store i have a little bungee cord in here and that is connected to that so when i pull back on that i get a lot of air moving right at my face and i can pull this back and pull it like that and there you go did you feel that through the camera i bet you did and a little bit of dust in there a little plastic flakes i broke off but let's see what happens when i fill this up with fog Whoa! Very nice. Really fill it up. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Perfect! Pretty nice, right? So, that's what I made. I can't wait to have fun with it. Uh, maybe I'll get my roommate with it later today. Who knows? Thanks. But thank you so much for watching and being part of this. I hope that you all have such a stellar school year. Uh, again, we have our online after school club with all of the materials sent to your door. Be sure to sign up for that. If this is the type of fun you like to have, you can go to our website below. But nonetheless, thank you again for joining us. And as we say at Science Explorers, if it's not fun, we're not doing it. Bye-bye.